Hello, this is Aaron from Lo-Fi and DIY, and today I'd like to uh, show you um, a back I designed for a rare camera, which by the way is not entirely a, a profitable idea, but sometimes I really like to uh, just see what I can what I can do. And uh, I thought this was a fun project. It was challenging, but it was fun. Um, basically, this is a Graflex XL. It's a press camera, and uh, they're fairly rare. Um, and it took me a long time to get it because the uh, the price point of it was very high. I managed to actually put together several parts of broken cameras to get this one uh, completely working. And uh, I really like it. It's kind of an ugly duckling. It's the the the, the cameras that I gen generally like are these these funky looking press cameras. And so I, I made this instant back for it. And as you can see, it's very similar to my other instant backs, just simply a different mating surface here. And uh, let's uh, show you how to ins install this, put it on the back of this camera. So you just take it like this and put it in here. This particular one I've I found uh is a little bit more challenging to uh, to put the back on, and certainly it's challenging for me to do it while also running this camera. So let me see what I can do here. There we go. Okay, for this particular one, I actually lock each side independ independently. because it is a little bit more challenging to get it on there. Okay. Okay, so now you can see it's made it to the back. And you can kind of see it from different angles here. There's still plenty of room for your hand and the handle. And I like to locate the buttons of my press camera uh, mounted instant, instant backs right there near my thumb. So the, um, the Instax, I'm sorry, not Instax, the, the Polaroid iType camera back for the uh, Mamiya Universal Press has its button right there, easy to access. Um, the 600 SE, same thing, and of course this one right here. Just makes it so much easier to just eject that way. Okay, now, as with those other cameras, when you open it, just simply slide this. I'm going to pop the film in. that dark slide in that way okay press it all the way in and then when you close it just kind of squeeze on both sides like that it's nice and snug so you just got to squeeze both sides okay and then as soon as you've done that then you can go ahead and eject the dark slide that's just pressing this button and you will hear the sound of the um, the motor being engaged, and then like a release at the end. When there's a release at the end, you release the button. It's something you get very quickly used to. It's not very hard at all. So you go, hold it down, done. Then you just lift this out of the way. Now there's that, that little dark slide thing. Um, the, the frog tongue comes out. So just flip that off and then pull the dark slide out of the way. Okay. And so, as for the use of the camera, 
Um, this is a, a fully manual camera. Okay, and so if you were to use a fully manual camera in outdoor light, get some sort of a light meter, and then you basically tune that to 650. 650 is the ASA of the uh, the 600 film, as well as the old Impossible film. They're just a little bit, a little faster than the than the other. So 650 is is the speed, and then just go ahead and you can see that needle swing back and forth. You just line your yourself up with the needle, and then you can read uh, what the settings are right here. Okay, I've got a Gaussian Pilot. I, it's it's very old, but it's very very uh, accurate. And it's really nice. So um, basically, you get your reading, and then you can actually put it on the camera. And what's really nice about all of these modern instant films, except for of course. Uh, SX-70 film, they're all fast. And because they're fast, what'll happen is you can do indoor and outdoor and gray days sort of shots. You can you can take shots in just about every weather, uh, whereas the, uh, the 100 film is limited to uh, really good daylight or really strong flash film. So that is an extra, extra special thing about it. Um, other than that, you're just gonna simply make your shot and I'm just going to pretend I'm making my shot here Let's see yeah I guess I could just make a shot why not so in my case I'm just going to go ahead and let's see take a shot Okay, so I took a shot, and now you just go ahead and eject. Okay, again, you see this uh, frog tongue, tongue coming out here? Since we're outside, this, this uh, is less important uh, every year when I come out with this film because they've been making it much safer to shoot during daylight. But you just pop this loose like that, and you see how that's blue like that? Just face that down. And just face it down for a couple of minutes. Uh, some people will actually shove it in a uh, in a pocket or in a box. That's fine too. I just face it down. That seems to do just fine right now because the actual quality of the film has gone up exponentially when it comes to the uh, Polaroid 600 film of this generation. It used to be when it was under Impossible, you had to shield the film like crazy. Now it's much more reasonable. Okay, so. In the case of this, it does not have a dark slide and has a momentary switch. The reason I designed this way, very, very uh, simple, yet very sturdy. You'll see I've, I've got a lot of uh, reinforcement going on. Um, I go with, with all of my designs, I go by the keep it simple, stupid rule. You probably heard that before, the kiss rule. And uh, it hasn't done me wrong. Uh, I don't have the light leaks that people have when they try to design uh, um, uh, a camera back with uh, um, plastic and felt and all that stuff. There's, there's long-term issues with those. Um, at some point, as I'm able to add more structural and more rigid materials, I may add a dark slide at some point, uh, but I may not. Like this particular one here, it is actually physically impossible because of the limited space with plastics to even put a dark slide in there, even if I wanted to, um, because of the way the uh, the back, how tight the back is. This this back is tight tighter by several millimeters uh, from the Mamiya Universal Press or the uh, Polaroid 600 SE. There's a lot less space to work with, so in order to make it as rigid as possible, like I say, no dark slide. Uh, if you um, take a picture and you just want to take off the back um, <laughs> you could do what I do and if, since I do actually uh, shoot a lot with these um, all you have to do is just uh, tell yourself this is a that's a dollar 
okay? <laughs> That's my dark slide. My dark slide is that is a dollar. I, like I said, it's just, it's more worth it to me to make a product that lasts forever than something that, uh, uh, that has these extra features that are almost impossible to press into the plastic and make them a long, uh, long-lived product. Uh, as far as a momentary switch, the same thing goes. Uh, the reason I use a momentary switch and I don't actually have the, uh, the extra tiny, tiny plastic um, auto switch that keeps feeding it until it's done and then stops. Uh, the reason I go with the, went with the momentary switch is because, again, I do not want something that's going to accidentally, because it gets jammed or some problem or whatever, spit all the film out onto the, you know, onto the patio or something like that, one after another. And that happens with the instant film cameras. Um, the, all those little glitchy features uh, in these uh, plastic consumer grade cameras um, make for all kinds of potential mistakes. And I personally think anybody can learn this very simple thing where you can feel it load and unload. Um, I like to be a little closer to the, um, to the um, to the roots of the, of the analog photography, which is not having all these little glitzy gadgets and stuff. That's also why I don't have a rechargeable battery setup. If you want rechargeable batteries, buy your rechargeable batteries in AAA, but I'm not going to connect an extra little circuit with USB and a battery that will go, go dead after a couple of years. Um, I'm not buying into that. That's something that, again, these are built for longevity. As far as I'm concerned, they're being designed for a machine that has lasted 50 to 70 years in some cases. So I'm not going to design something that uh, will start exhibiting its failings over time uh, in short order compared to uh, the camera that it's mated to. So anyway, um, that last bit was uh, just a little lo-fi rambling there by me. Um, I really do uh, take pride and pleasure in what I built, and so now maybe you hear some of the things that I like about it. Okay, thanks. Bye.